Good morning, everyone. All right, let's get the energy flowing in this place. Stand up. I want you to fist bump three people. Thank you very much. You may be seated. I'm going to ask at this time that you take a moment to move into uh, your proverbial quiet place, whether that be you bowing your heads, closing your eyes. Uh, I believe the word that is utilized in, uh, in this space is uh, center. I'm going to give a prayer uh, before I begin uh, so that hopefully we can all be on one accord. For he who sits high and looks low, we do thank you for this privilege and opportunity to be here on this day. We do not count this day lightly because we know that in the proverbial words of a song it could have been the other way we thank you for waking us up this morning with sound mind health and strength breath in our bodies we thank you O oh god that even though things could be better they sure enough could be worse but yet as we know that in life the proverbial glass can be either half empty or half full we choose on this day in 2024, that we are no longer going to look at life as the glass is half empty, but we're going to be grateful and thankful for what is in the glass. Go with us now, stand by us, amen. I want to, first of all, before I begin, I do want to acknowledge, and first of all, good morning to each and every one of you. I want to acknowledge the presence of my wife for 32 years, Gloria, she's here. And I do also want to acknowledge my partners in crime who are not here today. Uh, they are watching us virtually, uh, Elizabeth and Frank and Linda. Uh, they, I believe Frank and Linda, many of you know, they're in Pennsylvania. Oh, there you go. Hey, all right, well, wait a minute. There are two Lindas, right? Okay, Frank's wife is Linda, right? Okay, and then my other buddy, Linda. Amen. All right, thank you. At this time, I want us to uh, center ourselves because on this Sunday, for those of you that remember, I was here on around this time last year. I believe the date was January the 22nd. I stood before you and under the backdrop of what we are, of course, dealing with presently and every year at this time, the uh, NFL football playoffs, if you remember. And by the way, because I went to bed early, who won with Kansas City and who, who won that game? Kansas City won? Okay, thank you. It was under that backdrop last year uh, that we came before you. The passage in the Hebrew scriptures was, I believe, Numbers chapter 13, verses 30 through 32. It was a scene where Caleb stood the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and pursue because we're well able to pursue. Regrettably, Caleb was not the only one that felt that way. There were others that felt differently. And they said, let us not go up because we are not able. And I use that foundational passage to present to you hopefully encouragement for, at the time, the new year 2023. And the title of that message was, Go For It. We used as an analogy, if you remember, the fact that we are all, I believe, in this life and in various segments of your life, we are in the fourth down of our existence. And just like as you are seeing with uh, NFL teams, 
and the plays that they are calling, especially on fourth down, because traditionally, as you know, whenever there's a fourth down, normally they will give up the ball. Normally they will punt the ball. But now you're seeing more and more a new generation of coaches that are coming up and they're realizing that uh, if we're going to lose or if we are not going to make it, then let us do it fighting. Let us do it try. In other words, let us go for it. I left with you several reasons last year, I'm still on last year, as to why we should go for it. If you remember, those four things were, one, because the prize that you and I are after, the prize requires it. Number two, the play demands it, that if you want to win, you have to go for it. Number three, if you choose to punt, be warned that if you punt, the punt may destroy it because you are seeking a prize and you're seeking a promise. And then because we are all gathered here today with the fact that of me believing that uh, there is something greater than us, something that's unseen, something that orders our steps, then we are assured by faith that the power that is ours, it ensures it. That is what I stood on this place last year uh, to share with you. And so I guess my question uh, today is this, how did it go? Did you go for it? Did you succeed? Did you fail? You're here today, which lets me know that you did succeed. You may not have succeeded for the moment, but your presence here lets me know that there was a success somewhere. I think we can all agree that 2023 was a year. I say that for a reason because as Tori has read the passage of scripture, Revelation chapter number three, verse 12, you will notice in that verse, you will see a phrase, and it is the phrase of which I'm going to launch this presentation to you today. It is a phrase where, again, the writer states, he who overcomes, shall I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Notice the emphasis was not on the pillar, the temple, or God. The emphasis was on a, the, and my. I want to talk today from this subject. It's personal. Many of you who watch commercials like me, you know that there are various types of commercials. Some commercials are very captivating. And this particular commercial that has been played recently, my wife will tell you, this commercial, when it first came on, it got my attention. And the reason why it did was, it was a commercial, you have seen this commercial, of a German-based rental car company. This particular company is known globally for its savvy advertising, for its savvy, savvy marketing. And uh, needless to say, the products that they uh, produce are some that uh, commands a lot of attention. I think what I'm gonna do, because I want to engage your visual as well, I'm just going to show you, for those of you that can even see that far, uh, this is the ad. It is the ad for six. And allow me to go ahead and just read, of course, it's a short 30 minute, uh, 30 second clip. It begins by saying, ugh, this rental car is so boring to drive. But let's be honest, the rental car industry is the definition of boring. And the reason can be found in the name itself, rent a car. You don't just want a friend, you want the friend. You don't just want a job, you want the job. The is always over a. That's why we don't just offer just a car. We offer the car. Back to verse number 12 of Revelation chapter 3. He who overcomes, him will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. In other words, 
is personal. 2023 has been a year. It's been a year for some of us of sadness. It's been a year of death, bereavement. Certainly it occurred in my family. A year of confusion, a year of collapse, a year of the various challenges that you and I face every day. But by faith, and I'm speaking to your spirit now, how many of you believe that 2023 was the setback you needed in order to be set up in 2024? If you believe that today, hear the word that comes out of the scriptures. For it says, he who overcomes, him will I make a pillar. Let me start with that word, a. Uh. Those of you that are educators and those who are uh, certainly uh, competent in the English language and grammar, you know that a uh, is an indefinite article. A uh, means that it's general, nothing special. It means that it could be one of many. There is no further identification or specificity to an indefinite article. And in this particular text, we see that the writer mentions that for those of us who have the ability to overcome life's challenges, we have promises and we have rewards. What is that reward? The first one is this, you will become a pillar. Pillar, of course, the, the, the word itself lets us know that you're gonna be strong because you're gonna to have to bear something. You're going to be invisible because you're not going to be noticed. But without you, nothing can stand up. And so the word today is this. Maybe God has made you and I a pillar because you have right now the pillar of responsibility. You may be a caregiver. You may be someone who provides care or service to others. You may be someone who, one, a family, a group, or even a community depend on. And so the good word for today is for those of you that find yourselves in that zip code, the good news is that you are an overcomer because God has made you a pillar. It doesn't mean that you'll get any notice. You won't be on page one, but you will be important, celebrated, and vital to the work of the ministry. Secondly, however, notice this. Because it says, if you overcome, you will be made a pillar in the temple. Notice how the article changes from an indefinite to a definite article. The, as you know, means that there is something special, something that is set apart, something that is chosen, selected, or preferred from those things uh, or those others uh, that may be uh, identified with it. And so there's no harm in being able to select something from a group of or from many of. And in this text, the writer makes it clear that of the temples that are around, when you are an overcomer, not only will you be a pillar, but you will be in the temple the temple that's selected by the creator, the temple that is selected by that who has made you and has designed you and has orchestrated you. Let me say this to you, uh, UUC, uh, because you are in a very strategic and privileged position today. Maybe you don't know this or not, but the Universal, uh, Universal Unitarian uh, Faith denomination is the fastest growing denomination in the nation today. While many Baptist churches and Christian churches, while we're struggling to sustain ourselves, you are growing fastly. Why? Because you hold the gem of premise, that gem being the mutual and equitable love and respect and value for every man. It is time in history that we move to it. There's been enough hate. There's been enough discord. There's been enough injustice and there's been enough inequity. You right now hold the key. 
which now is going to provide you with the guide and leadership necessary to help many of us make it to where we need to go. Christianity is not gonna do it. We've got too many issues with Christianity. We're too busy trying to tell people where to go, how to do it. And if you don't do it our way, you're going to hell. Christianity is not equipped for times such as these, but you hold the key. And so everywhere you go, everyone you see, greet them with a smile, greet them with a hug, let them know of what you already know, that they are valued in the sight of the God. And so today, I believe that the temple for times such as these is here. You are going to show the world how to love, respect, and value one another, regardless of skin color, regardless of gender, regardless of life choices. And so today we celebrate you because again, this journey is personal. I know that this congregation is an amalgamation of all types of beliefs. And I understand that because you hold that commonality, again, after that, then you go in a whole bunch of different directions because one believes this, the other believes that. One says we should do this, one says we shouldn't do that. But I think you ought to pack yourself on the back because of the fact that you have labored and you have sustained yourself this far, I believe that's a testament to the love that you hold and the love that you embrace. But back to the text and the reason why I'm here, because it's 2024 now. 2023 was a year. The question today is this, however, what do you want 2024 to be? Do you want it to be a year? Do you want it to be the year? Or do you want it to be my year? For the text says, he who overcomes, him shall I make a pillar in the temple of my God. It's an amazing thing how just a simple word can make all the difference. Now, again, back to my educators in English uh, folk. I, I, I know what my is. My is not just a pronoun, but my is a possessive pronoun, which lets me know that whenever you use the word my, you are claiming possession. You are claiming ownership. You are claiming connection and identity with that thing. And as a result of that, that lets me know something more because when something is a something, you don't pay it any mind. When something is the something, it may get your attention, but it may not get your engagement. But when something is mine, well, guess what? When it's broke, I know you're going to fix it. When it's dirty, I know you're going to try to clean it. When there's something wrong, you're not going to abandon it, but you're going to tend to it. That's why those of you that have children, what makes those children special is the fact is that they're not a child and they're not the child, they're my child. And so they may be knuckleheads, they may not listen to me, they may do their own thing, whatever it is they, they do it, but because of that possessive pronoun, because it's my child, I'm going to hang in there. I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to suffer if I have to. I'm going to do what is necessary. And this is where I believe we are at this year. If you have had setbacks in 2023, as I close today, let the word today be this. In 2024, it's not going to be a year. It's not going to be the year. It's going to be my year. And so when it's my year, guess what? When you go to the grocery store and the clerk doesn't give you change, you won't react, you won't go off, you won't write your congressman, but you'll take it in stride because you'll realize that this is an opportunity 
to engage. This is an opportunity maybe to have a conversation. You may not know that that clerk may be going through a bad day and just your spirit recognizing that. Maybe that little misstep provides an opportunity for conversation. It will happen because you made the declaration on today that 2024 is gonna be my year. As I close, and again, because I never want you to believe what I say, let me use the Hebrew scriptures because those of you that know characters in scripture, I'm going to let them speak even better than I can. Because if you notice, those who were used greatly by their creator, they were used greatly because they had a personal relationship. They didn't see their God as a God. They didn't see their God as the God, but they saw their God as my God. Miriam understood that. Daniel understood that. David understood that. Was not the same David where it said, the Lord is my shepherd? Was it not the same David that said that the Lord is my strength, my buckler, my high tower, the horn of my salvation? David made it personal. Nehemiah made it personal when he prayed to God and he said, God, hold, control, help my hands. You can help my hands, Lord, because you are my God. If that's not good enough for you, I do remember that there's a savior in the Christian faith. His name is Jesus. Was he not on the cross where at that noon hour when the sky turned black, he looked up at his father and he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then I close with the Apostle Paul that reminds all of us today, and let this be a word for you today because it's person. God is telling us all today is this, if you're gonna live in 2024, don't let it be a year, don't let it be the year, make it your year. For Paul said it this way, for my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. And so as I leave you today, I leave with you the way I leave, left my Ebenezer congregation because as I looked at your website, I noticed the fact that in your website, just like at Ebenezer, we are always trying to get our people engaged and involved and, and asking them to uh, take a part, take a, a greater participation in the work of the ministry. And for today, as I said to Ebenezer, I say to you, not let this to be a church or the church. Make this church your church. Will you do that for us? Think what would happen if everybody had that mindset. Think what would happen if everybody walked in on a Sunday or walked in during the week and as you share together and as you commune together, you're doing it with a my mentality. Just think how things could change. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.